when we're looking at smoking versus vaping. Vaping is probably worse in terms of the damage to the airway and the insulin resistance that comes from it. Now, 88% of adults in the US have some degree of insulin resistance. And people hear this and think America is just fat and metabolically sick, but we're not actually the worst country when it comes to this. And part of it is because of how different ethnicities store fat. And I'll come back to that. But there's two roads to insulin resistance. So there's the fast lane, and I could make you insulin resistant in six hours with either of these common three things. But if I removed them, your resistance would go away just as quickly. Now the slow lane, that's a problem. And there's certain lifestyle habits and problems with our diets that are massively contributing to slow insulin resistance. My mission is to help people appreciate that much of chronic disease we look at them as these siloed individual distinct disorders with totally distinct origins, and yet much of them uh, share a common core. It's as if their branch is growing from the same tree. And the conventional clinical care will look at these branches and give someone a prescription for a medication, which is only going to prune the branch back a little bit, never actually solving the problem. It can just grow right back. And so we can look at most of these chronic diseases that are killing us globally and, and then say, okay, there are in fact some simple lifestyle changes that can be implemented that will help reduce the risk of not only one or two, but all of the top killers from things like Alzheimer's disease to uh, heart disease to type 2 diabetes to uh, liver failure, fatty liver disease. All of them share a common metabolic core. That's my mission. And what is that common metabolic core? Yeah, it's a little known problem called insulin resistance. In fact, when I first started this topic, I stumbled on one paper that documented how when fat tissue is growing, it increases the risk of type 2 diabetes. That was this concept in the early 2000s that was really getting a lot of attention. Diabesity, this kind of dual epidemic of wherever we see obesity, we see more type 2 diabetes. And this manuscript outlined something that was to me a revelation at the time. It was so fascinating where when fat tissue is growing, it starts releasing pro-inflammatory proteins. That inflammation caused a problem called insulin resistance. And then that got me into this realm of understanding that other tissues of the body, as they become insulin resistant, then you start to spread the chronic disease. And, and, and essentially coming to the conclusion that something like hypertension, high blood pressure, which is the most common cardiovascular problem and the main contributor to heart disease. Well, insulin resistance is the main cause of hypertension. Um, they call Alzheimer's disease type 3 diabetes or more accurately, um, insulin resistance of the brain. Even the most common forms of infertility in men, it's erectile dysfunction. Well, that's because of insulin resistance of the blood vessels. In women, the most common form of infertility is polycystic ovary syndrome, or PCOS. That's because of the insulin resistance affecting her ovaries and the ability to produce the proper sex hormones. Insulin resistance is, it's kind of a, it's a disorder that has two parts. It's like a coin with two sides, that as much as we think of, we, we think of one side just because we hear the word insulin resistance, but there's another part to it that I need to, that is very important. So. Insulin, first of all, is a hormone that we make from the pancreas, a long kind of gland tucked underneath the stomach. And the pancreas is a very busy organ. It makes a lot of different hormones. It makes hormones that come into the blood. It also makes enzymes that go into the, the, into the intestines to help digest food. But among the hormones that are being released into the blood is insulin. Now, in the person with type one diabetes, their immune system has destroyed their beta cells. So they don't make insulin anymore. That's why for a person with type one diabetes, insulin is a life-saving therapy. You're giving them what they're not making anymore. But for everybody else, we have beta cells and they're releasing insulin when they need to. Now, usually the main stimulus, the main reason the beta cell is releasing the insulin is because blood glucose levels go up. So I eat sugar. You eat sugar or not even something as obvious as sugar, but bread. Or, or crackers. White rice. Chips, oh yes, yes. So basically anything that falls into the family of a carbohydrate. So if the earth grows it, that's a carbohydrate. Um, if it's a plant, it's a carbohydrate. Maybe that's a better way of describing it. And so it's going to have starches and sugars, which all is kind of falls into this family of carbohydrate. Depending on how much starch or sugars that it has, 
then that will result in a bigger or smaller blood glucose or blood sugar response. But then if blood sugar is too high for too long, that becomes very harmful to the body. So insulin comes in um, and helps lower the blood glucose. And then having done its job, insulin comes back down. So insulin comes out like a taxi and transports all the glucose in my blood mm -hmm. to various places around the body to Perfect. store them? Perfect. So yeah, like and the main, yeah, it, that's right. It, that, you can sit, look, it's a shuttle. It's a taxi saying, hey, glucose, come on in. I'm dropping you off at the muscle. So mostly, just as an interesting tangent of insulin, before I finish answering insulin resistance, insulin will open the doors for blood sugar to come in and dr drive the taxi in, mostly at the muscle and the fat. Muscle and fat tissue need insulin to come and bring the sugar in via taxi. However, other tissues, and, and the brain a little bit as well, other tissues will still respond to insulin, but they don't need insulin to tell it what to do with the sugar. It just takes it in. But even on those, like the liver, for example, if the liver sees sugar driving by in the taxi, it just opens the doors and lets it in. It doesn't need insulin to come and tell it to let the sugar in. However, even at the liver, and every other cell has a similar degree of this, the liver doesn't know what to do with it. So this is back to something I'd mentioned earlier where insulin's thematic effect at the entire body is to tell the body what to do with energy in all of its forms as, as these kind of caloric rich molecules, what to do with lactate, what to do with ketones, what to do with fats or glucose, what to do with pro amino acids. So insulin will tell the body what to do with all of those things. But again, its most famous effect is to control blood sugar. And that's not wrong because its most powerful activator is blood sugar. So with all of that in mind, insulin resistance is two problems wrapped into one. The one problem is the most obvious one, which is that insulin isn't working as well as it used to. So back to the analogy of the taxis dropping off sugar, if the muscle tissue has become insulin resistant, insulin is coming and trying to pull the sugar-loaded taxi into the muscle, but the muscle's not listening. So say that again. So the yeah. insulin's coming past with the glucose inside it. Well, not, not technically. It. Yeah, but yeah. just to sort of go with your metaphor, but maybe to use another one, insulin comes and knocks on the doors. It's like the bouncer yeah. at the door. It's coming and knocking on the door of the muscle saying, hey, muscle, I've got some sugar that wants to come in. Mm -hmm. And normally the muscle will say, oh, yeah, sure, okay, open it up the doors and let the sugar come in. When the muscle is insulin resistant, the bouncer is knocking. Maybe there's even, I'm almost getting ahead of myself, but one bouncer, maybe two or three bouncers pounding on the doors of the muscle cell, but the muscle cell's not listening. It's become deaf. That's the insulin resistance of what we call insulin resistance, where some of insulin's effects, like helping lower blood sugar, it's not working very well anymore. And the muscle is just an obvious example because there's so much of it. You know, it is the biggest tissue on the average individual. Someone who's very obese perhaps now has more fat tissue, but even people who are overweight, most of us is muscle. So that's a good, it's a good tissue to look at. So part of insulin resistance is that of all the things insulin is trying to do, including lower blood sugar, it doesn't do it quite as well as it used to. Some of the cells or tissues of the body have become deaf to insulin's demands. Now, however, at the same time that's happening, insulin levels are higher. And that is really important. Um, and I'll, I'll mention an example in just a moment that highlights the difference between the two. But we have to consider any time we talk about insulin resistance, we think of two things happening um, in concert. One, insulin isn't working quite as well as it used to in various places of the body. At the same time, insulin levels are higher. And that kind of takes us back to the, um, the muscle cell where I'd mentioned, getting a little ahead of myself, that a bouncer is knocking on the door. And once upon a time, the muscle cell would hear that one polite knock from that one bouncer or one molecule of insulin, if you will. And it would open the door and let the glucose or the blood sugar come in. But now the muscle cell, um, the, the, the bouncer, insulin's knocking on the door, but the muscle doesn't listen. It's resistant. <clears throat> and so... The body has adapted and it learns, oh, okay, well, if one bouncer wasn't enough, let's send an angry mob of bouncers. And then the glucose, the muscle will start to open the door. And, and, and indeed it can. So those two problems go together. 
On one hand, insulin isn't working as well as it used to. That's what gives it the name insulin resistance. But there's another part that is equally present, which is that blood insulin levels are higher. 